we have to begin with the one that obviously is bringing back a franchise that is over 50 years old. And I went back, you know, I did my due diligence and I went back to go see the original um, Exorcist movie because there's a slew of them. We were on uh, our Patreon hangout and they were letting me know, make sure you watch three. I'm like, three? And they're like, you don't forget the prequel. I'm like, the prequel? <laughs> Bro, this franchise is so crazy and I hate calling it a franchise because The Exorcist really is a classic movie, right? right? And it got like, you know, to use the words that the demon would say, hoard out into yeah. all of these different installments. Like You're not a fan you... of like the Jaws franchise? <laughs> to me, it ends at Jaws. It's, it, yeah. Exactly. It would be like one of those where it's like we all hold that original so high and mm -hmm. maybe one or two sequels kind of stand out. But like you ignore those. Everyone yeah. loves this one movie. This is the one that gets replayed in theaters for like those $5 Tuesdays, not the rest. Dude, this franchise is so weird. Uh, I've heard people say good things about three. Do you know about this little uh, twofer here about Exorcist beginning and Exorcist Dominion where no. they hired they hired the boy, Paul Schrader, to make a prequel movie? He turned it in. They said it was the most boring thing they've ever received. <laughs> they recut it up, what a goat. released this version that was action-packed. It bombed. They, <laughs> they rehired him <laughs> and then had him release this. This is the type of sequels that we're dealing with. With The Exorcist. Ugh, they yikes. all tend to be kind of cursed. And uh, we've been cursed with three of these. Uh, the Exorcist Believer, The Exorcist Deceiver, and then The Exorcist Deceiver sequel. You said you don't like David Gordon Green. Can you specify what is it exactly? Were you a fan of him early on in his, I like, was. Yeah, I mean, he's... Comedy... Look, th there's sort of been, like, a, a common refrain going around on, like, film Twitter over the past couple of weeks that this dude's just got the, the craziest filmography. It is so all over the place from, great. like, these, these, like these really low key indie dramas, these big studio comedies, these random prestige dramas thrown in yeah. there. And then his more recent foray into adapting classic horror franchises for the modern day. Um, I, the thing about him is like, I don't know if there's a distinct quality that I can put a, that crosses over his various films. He is a little bit chameleonic. He, he you know, adapts to the different stories he tries to tell. I, In a I just way know, or a bad way. I don't know. Sometimes I like to see a little bit of my director's personality, but I think there's also room to be kind of adaptable. I just wish that there was a little more there. Like I, I just didn't. I don't think I found the same things about Halloween interesting as he did. Like there, <laughs> yeah. uh, what was it? The second one I think had some interesting ideas around mob mentality before it kind of gets diverted as well. But for the most part, I was just not into the like, uh, you know, dredging up of old ideas and, and, and I, I don't know. It's also cause I, I had less interest in that franchise for, for this it just feels like he's doubling down on a lot of, you know, the the more um, upsetting aspects of watching a exorcism type movie and not necessarily getting to yeah. the unsettling core of it. But I didn't see it. You're the one who actually went to the movie theater and, and dealt uh, with nearly two hours of Exorcist it's Believer. Kind of disgusting. And to take what you said, he'll double down on a lot of those franchise tropes that he's kind of become like the corporate man for, which is mm -hmm. really weird. But then that mob mentality, mob mentality thing that you mentioned, Halloween Kills. Mm -hmm. It's like he heard the flack for it for the people who didn't like it. And he goes, okay, how about if I did mob mentality good? <laughs> he, look, you, it, it has to be brought up that he also co-writes these with um, your boy who you really Danny love McBride. the series. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Look, we're not against the idea of a comedy writer doing horror. We love Jordan Peele. How mm -hmm. the original Exorcist was a comedy writer who couldn't get it, so he did a horror script, and boom, you got a classic. But for a man who covered, what, three seasons now of religion in a mm -hmm. satirical kind of parody way over on HBO with, uh, what's the Righteous called? Gemstones. What is he doing here? This takes everything that made the first movie so great. And throws it out the window. Like, you have to at least meet the movie halfway with The Exorcist being a very Catholic movie about mm -hmm. Catholic priests exercising a Catholic ritual, a Catholic demon. Like, it all falls into play. And this movie is trying to, like... <laughs> I know there's a lot of baggage with this, but Last Jedi in the worst way possible. That it doesn't matter what kind of demon it is. You can get a witch doctor. You can get a Pentecostal priest. Yeah. You can get anybody to come in as long as you've prayed. 
in some capacity. If you believe in a higher being, you're technically all connected. Look, with everything that's going on in the world, I would hate to see David Gordon Green's opinion on world events thinking, why don't we just all get along? The pitch in this movie is ridiculous because it's a continuation of what happened in the original, which I highly recommend. You can watch that movie several times, the original Exorcist, and pick up on so many different things. This feels like what people complain about um, with Watchmen, that Zack Snyder read the comic book and he said, ooh, cool images, and forgot all of the subtext of it. Because so much of this movie is just imitating shots from the original. So much of this is kind of just updating it for no reason where you have um, the two new main girls who are friends, but they're not really friends. The, right. the movie does this a lot. It's supposed to be a new demon, but then you're bringing back an original actress in Burston to come mm -hmm. back and say, I remember you, demon. It's like, did, did, did she forget this is supposed to be a different one? The movie is very much all over the place. I'm sure you've heard that they've called this like a very uh, pro-life movie. I'm here to <laughs> yeah, tell you... Well no, yeah. this is trying to be that and then it flakes out and that's even more annoying, right? I think you and I get more annoyed with a movie that's pretending to say something but isn't really saying Absolutely. anything at all. Yeah, David Ehrlich, I think, published one of the early reviews and he said that it, it's, it got an anti-abortion message and then I saw a lot of people being like, I don't really think you read the movie correctly. <laughs> Bro, he's a goofy... Like, first of all, right, it's simple math. We just said Danny McBride has been making fun of religion for the longest yeah. time. Like, it's not that hard to see the IMDb trivia. When you watch the movie, it's just goofy the way they try to use that as a almost twist in mm -hmm. terms of this being a movie about how do you get someone who has no faith to become a believer? Is it their choice? And these actresses' movies can be pretty funny because it's like... <laughs> What choice do you really have when your daughter looks like that? Um, <laughs> the whole cast in here, you know, I don't think compares to the original. Um, you could say it's because of the direction. You could also say it's because of the script. Mm. The two girls do as much as they possibly can with the story that they have. But as much as I love Leslie Odom Jr., man, um, my man looked bored in the movie. Mm. He did not look like he was giving it his all. It felt like he had a rent a child. Like, he did not care for this girl turning into different things. When it comes to the horror, a lot of it is pretty standard. And just that idea that he keeps getting, the director, these big franchises that obviously you're going to get scrutinized when it's 50 years old and they're classics. But even more so when you get the ability to bring back a legacy actress. Like, people are going to mm -hmm. be like, why you? You know? And yeah. I don't think they use her at all. There is something that they do with her character. You sit with me in theaters, bro. Yeah. Sometimes I'll huff, sometimes I'll puff, but I'm not usually that audible. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad, bro. It is a disgrace. It is a disservice. The The act of making this movie is blasphemous, in my opinion. Uh, William Friedkin, rest in peace. I feel mm. left the moment they dropped the trailer to this one. And I'm glad that he wasn't here to see it because uh, there's that quote going around that he told a critic that he was going to be rolling in his grave. <laughs> that the guy who made Pineapple Express was touching his, his series. And I, I kid you not, I've been going back and seeing so much of how he made that original, dude. Fantastic stuff. I want to make a whole video just on that. And I swear you can make a video of William Friedkin reviewing this new movie because everything they do here is everything he said he didn't want to do in the original. CGI smoke. Head twists where they don't need to be. Hell, there is a moment in this movie where a character, bless her soul, and Dowd, man, yeah. just tells you the whole purpose of the movie. Uh. And that was a whole big thing about the original Exorcist that he cut out all of those uh, exposition sequences. This whole movie is the antithesis of what the first Exorcist was. It's not terrible if you don't care about the original. But, like, what's the point if that's what you're continuing on? I, I got nothing else to say, Zach. I heard they also reuse a lot of lines from the original Exorcist in ways that feel very ham-fisted. It, it, it just seems like the, the worst kind of, you know, dredging up of the past. Um I, like I don't there's know, a man. moment in the original when uh, someone uh, boxes. Mm. So here, Leslie Odom Jr., a photographer, boxes. Like, you, why? <laughs> That's the movie that you're dealing with here. I, I had really high expectations because I don't hate the guy. I, yeah. He did interesting things with Halloween. I know you're never going to please people, but this is just like so by the numbers, bland, and the worst thing that it could possibly be, boring. So if you're excited for Exorcist Believer, uh, you've been deceived. Uh, you still have you, two more in the horizon. I don't think they're going to help fix this one, but... 
Yeah, do you think there's a world in which maybe we don't have two more? Like, is this such a false they paid start? They 400 that mil, bro. They, they did. But, like, are they going to have to start fresh? Because it's not like it lit the box office on fire. It Absolutely can, not. It, you know, made 26 domestically over the weekend. But uh -huh. based on the word of mouth, I would anticipate that number is going to drop a lot especially when we consider what's about to come out in theaters which we'll get into in a oh, little yeah. bit that's going to be completely different uh I, I think my biggest thing that stands out to me is the idea that um this is blumhouse and yeah and i, I look i follow blumhouse business wise we both know that the joke is he gives you a pack of gum right for your budget <laughs> and because it's so low he's always finding like profit because they dropped 400 mil he's doing it the opposite of the blumhouse model Mm -hmm. And I'd be scared, bro, because this is not going to make it back. No. Um, and pissing off a fran uh, pissing off people this early who love the franchise is not a good start, because at least the first Halloween remake, the 2018 one, did have some fans kind of, you know, appreciating it. I don't know, bro. It's really bad. <laughs> to put it bl bluntly, I have no faith in the rest yeah. of them, but we'll see. Maybe it just needs a different director yeah, and cast I... and script and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they could always bring in Tony Gilroy and Rogue One it or something, right? Something like that, dude. 